for as long as Yu-Gi-Oh has existed, players have been trying to destroy their opponent's spell and trap cards, commonly known as the back row. Including answers to these kinds of cards is a must in pretty much any deck, be it in the main or side deck. However, not all of these cards fulfill their role with the same effectiveness. So today, we'll be looking at some of the best cards the game has to offer, which erase your opponent's back row. Starting off at number 10, we have the only main deck monster to make this list, Arcfina Centric. This is a level 3 light fiend pendulum monster with 800 attack and 1000 defense. As a monster, Eccentric can tribute itself to target and destroy any one monster on the field. What we care about, however, is her pendulum effect, which allows you to target any spell or trap card in the field and destroy both itself and the targeted card. While the effect lacks the versatility or impact most other back removal options have, Eccentric makes up for it with her unique situation of being a pendulum monster. As we mentioned before, this is the only main deck monster to make this list, since most back removal effects show up in spell cards, making this Arcfiend a very interesting exception. Originally, Arcfiend Eccentric was played in the Pendulum decks of her era, mainly Metalfos. Since her Pendulum effect to destroy Spell or Trap is not restricted to your opponent's cards, you could use her to destroy your Metalfos combination and get a search, kind of acting as an additional Metalfos name that doesn't care about the position of the card that you want to destroy. She saw a lot of success in the strategy throughout all of 2017, but drastically dropped off in popularity after the deck left the meta. In 2023, however, two decks rose to dominance, which made very interesting use of this pendulum mechanic. First was Mathmech, who utilized her as part of their small world bridges, since she could be used as a stepping stone to add Mathmech Circular, the deck's main play enabler. Not only that, it was also easy to search with the aforementioned small world, allowing Mathmec to have a clean, searchable out to floodgates like there can be only one, which otherwise would end your whole turn. More interesting, though, was its use in one of 2023's strongest decks by far, Super Heavy Samurai. This combo deck functioned by not having any spells or traps in your grave, imposing a strict deck-building condition to make up for the deck's extremely powerful effects like Super Heavy Samurai Prodigy Waka Ushi. This posed a problem, however, as the deck could struggle greatly against back row strategies, since it wasn't able to main or side deck the big blowout cards that other decks could, since those were all spell cards, and would prevent most of your effects from going off. Nonetheless, players were quick to notice that Arcfina Centric was a pendulum monster, and would go to the extra deck when her effect was used and not the graveyard. Even if she found herself there, it wouldn't matter since pendulums are considered monsters while they're anywhere except in the pendulum scales. This meant that Eccentric was an instant 3 of in all super heavy samurai side decks as a way to deal with problematic floodgates, while allowing you to keep playing and a clear example of a card being played for what it is rather than for what it actually does. And at number 9, we have Galaxy Cyclone. This normal spell can target any set spell or trap in the field and then destroy it. Then, you can banish it from your graveyard on a subsequent turn in order to destroy any face-up spell or trap card in the field. This might seem underwhelming at first, being only able to hit face downs if you draw into the card, and not having the option of using both effects on the same turn. Nevertheless, Galaxy Cyclone feels a very specific niche that made the card a very relevant metagame piece. Right when it was released in 2015's Cross Souls, it immediately found a home in pretty much all Burning Abyss decks. You see, Dante Traveler of the Burning Abyss has an effect, which allows you to send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard, which is the central focus of its archetype. This meant that the Burning Abyss players filled their decks with cards that wanted to be sent to the graveyard, like Fiendish Rhino Warrior or Breakthrough Skill, so they could hit them off of their Dante or other cards that milled from your deck. Galaxy Cyclone slotted very nicely into this deck building principle, since it was a back row heavy format and this card could hit your opponent's back row without needing to draw it. Just hitting it off of a mill effect meant your opponent had to deal with you having a way to hit their face-up spells, mainly Cleef Wards during this time, with very little ways of dealing with it. The card didn't just see play during this time though, as it found a home in a lot of decks during the last couple of formats where Mystic Mine was legal. During this time, the Mystic Mine stun deck was not really something to care about, but you had to consider any deck playing the field spell, so answers had to fill a certain set of criteria. Galaxy Cyclone found a home in many Tierlament decks during this time, since during your turn you'd usually involve sending a million cards from your deck to the grave. Sending Galaxy Cyclone meant you had a quick and easy tool for removing your opponent's Mystic Mine, or any other floodgates that could ruin your day. Even discarding it for hand size after a few turns stuck under Mystic Mine gave you access to a way of playing without much issue. So while narrow in use, Galaxy Cyclone fulfills a very specific role in every format it's played in making it a very relevant card to keep in mind if your deck is focused on milling your own cards. 
And at number 8, we find the absolute classic Mystical Space Typhoon. This quick play spell can target and destroy any spell or trap on the field. Simplicity at its finest. MST established the framework upon which not only backward removal, but card design as a whole for the rest of the game's history would be based on. I think the card needs a little introduction. It's one of the game's most well-known pieces of cardboard for good reason. Released all the way back in 2002 Spell Ruler, this card has seen a myriad of reprints since then, being among the first cards new players will own. And all of its 22 years of existence, Mystical Space Typhoon has been played in all sorts of decks. During its inception, it proved too versatile for the multiple threats that lurked in players' black rows, rapidly earning its spot on the limited list. Even during this time, players ran the one copy they were allowed to, as the other options in removal just weren't as good. Pretty much all you could play was MST, Heavy Storm, or Dust Tornado. Heavy Storm, while powerful, couldn't be used on your opponent's turn, and was two-sided, so it would also hurt your own board. Dust Tornado was able to disrupt your opponent's turn, but was a trap card, meaning it would do nothing the first turn that you set it. Mystical Space Typhoon, though, filled the hole's early back removal design's hand, and set a standard that would take years to surpass. It's seen play in all sorts of decks during all sorts of formats, almost impervious to time. But as new options emerged, MST's time in the sun slowly faded away, taken over by cards with more specific ways to engage a back row. Still, the card finds itself coming back from time to time, and was even a standard in many Sky Striker deck lists, as an easy trade for card advantage that got you a spell in the graveyard for your striker effects. Even though times have kind of passed by this old classic, it's still important to remember that Mystical Space Typhoon does what it does better than any other card. Through decades of power creep, there is no single card that is just MST but better. There are cards that do similar stuff, which might be more relevant in a given format, but there's no card that does the same thing as Typhoon from the Mystical Space but better. And at number 7, we've got Nightbeam. This normal spell targets and destroys a set spell or trap card your opponent controls and then destroys it. While this would seem extremely underwhelming, its second effect is what matters the most with this card, being that your opponent cannot activate the targeted card in response to your Nightbeam. This might seem unimportant, but it's far from that. The card immediately saw playing Infernity Boards as an easy way to remove Infernity Barrier, but less good than the underrated tech of Spiritualism. Later on, it saw an explosion in play as a way of dealing with your very powerful chainable cards that plague the format. You see, in 2015, you had to deal with Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, El Shadal Fusion, Vanity's Emptiness, and Stellar Nova Alpha, and Nightbeam was the perfect answer for all of them, giving you a way to remove them without the risk of them being activated in response. This made the card skyrocket into the highest play rate it's seen in its lifespan during this time, but quickly fell off after these cards left the meta. The card saw a resurgence of sorts in 2022's branded Despia format as a way to combat Branded and Red. Despia's main combo ended in the quick play spell Branded and Red, which allowed them to get a bunch of resources by fusing cards like Ad Libitum of Despia and Despian Tragedy into Guardian Chimera, which would most times than not win the game on the spot by destroying a bunch of cards and drawing. Nightbeam found a spot in many players' side decks as a way to turn Despia's turn from an explosive plus four into just a mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon, if that. And at number six, we have Twin Twisters. This quick play spell can target two spell or trap cards in the field, destroy them at the cost of discarding one card. It seems Konami was reluctant to innovate on quick play back or removal after Mystical Space Typhoon, as it took them several years to come up with Twin Twisters. When they did though, it was a home run. Almost immediately Twin Twisters became one of the most played cards for the next four years. First printed as a super rare in Breaker of Shadows, Twin Twister was an easily accessible staple that was effective against most, if not all, decks. Even when printed in a low rarity, the card found itself attached to a decently sized price tag because it completely pushed Mystical Space Typhoon out of the meta. At the time, decks still packed a sizable chunk of generic back row, and being able to dispatch two of them with just one card far outweighed Twin Twister's additional cost. Not to mention, many decks can actually take advantage from discarding cards. Popular strategies at the time, like Burning Abyss or Blue Eyes, really valued some of their cards hitting the grave, which meant this quick play spell ended up without a real cost. With time, the card would slowly drop down in popularity, but spiked again in 2019's Thunder Dragon Orca Salmon Great Sky Striker format. Indeed, at the time, decks ended their turn with a bunch of very powerful back row, like Orca's Crescendo, Orchestrated Babble, the entire Sky Striker suit of quick play spells, and both Salmon Great Rage and Salmon Great Roar. 
This overwhelming presence of back row removal pieces made Twin Twisters an excellent, valuable piece of interaction for any and all kinds of players, especially since decks like Thunder Dragon and Orcus really wanted some of their cards to be in the grave instead of in their hand. During the COVID era of Yu-Gi-Oh, the cards saw a steep decline in play, since we had to deal with monster combo decks one after another, and Twin Twisters could do pretty much nothing against those decks. What really pushed the card out of relevance was the existence of the Eldritch archetype, where most trap decks up to this point didn't really want their traps being blown up. Both Eldlixers and Golden Lands replaced themselves with hitting the grave, meaning that Twin Twisters failed to be impactful when facing this kind of deck that it was meant to be best against. And Konami seemed to like that design principle, as they repeated it with Labyrinth, where their most important traps, Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth, have powerful graveyard effects. But still, there is no card that can remove two pieces of back row as a quick effect, meaning we'll be seeing a lot of these Twin Twisters for a long time to come. And at number 5, we have the Link Monster, Nightmare Phoenix. This fire attribute Link 2 Fiend monster with 1900 attack can be summoned using any two monsters with different names, and allows you to, on summon, discard a card to target and destroy a spell or trap your opponent controls. Also, if it's co-linked when it activates this effect, you get to draw a card. And all of your co-linked monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Nightmare Phoenix released in 2018's Flames of Destruction, one of the most influential sets of its time. From the release of Link Monsters in 2017 until this pack's release, players struggled to adapt to the new mechanic because of its restrictions. One of the biggest struggles was the absence of the Rank 4 toolbox that was built up for years after XC's monsters were first introduced. Cards like Diamond Direwolf and Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer were present in most players' extra decks because of their varied utility and ease of access to spot removal effects, which are invaluable in extra deck monsters. However, since Link monsters, at least originally, really restricted when, where, and what monsters you can bring out from your extra, these cards became very awkward to play successfully. Flames of Destruction introduced the Nightmares, a series of Link monsters that had very easy summoning conditions and very powerful removal effects with little cost and additional effects. Cards like Nightmare Cerberus could turn any two monsters into removal for special summon monsters, and Nightmare Unicorn could shuffle back any card on board in just a generic Link 3 body. These immediately became staples in any and all extra decks, since they not only filled the gaps left by the Rank 4 toolbox, but pushed the power level those cards had to unparalleled extremes. Out of these, the most relevant was definitely Nightmare Phoenix. Being one of the Link 2s, it was the easiest to summon, requiring just two monsters with different names, and could deal with back row in an era where most decks struggled with in engine removal. Its typing was also quite relevant, being a Fire Fiend, meaning most decks could use it to out the newly release There Can Be Only One, or older floodgates like Rival of the Warlords and Gozen Match, and later on, when Mystic Mind was released, these monsters showed a different advantage to deal with the stun variant of that deck. You see, not only could you remove a bunch of your monsters and on a Phoenix, which would usually remove Mystic Mine if your opponent controlled a monster, it also was an important part of finding the out. Nightmare Unicorn has an additional effect, where during your draw phase you can draw cards equal to the number of co-linked Nightmare monsters you control, easily netting you 2-3 to three draws each turn when in tandem with Nightmare Phoenix and Cerberus making finding that powerful backward removal spell a lot easier. All in all, Phoenix has been played non-stop since its release, as an incredibly easy to access back removal effect for any deck. And at number 4, we have Cosmic Cyclone. This quick play spell can target and banish any spell or trap on the field, with an additional cost of paying 1000 life points. It took almost 15 years, but Konami decided to try and rework Mystical Space Typhoon into a more powerful effect. And they managed to knock it out of the park. Cosmic Cyclone's ability to truly remove spells or traps by banishing instead of destroying is invaluable in an era where most back row cards have powerful graveyard effects. The 1000 light point cost seems a bit steep at first, and certainly is an issue when you're approaching time on round, but certainly is not enough of a deal breaker for a card to drop off in popularity. Indeed, the cards player worry most about today are in archetype spells and traps, which have grave effects in order to make up for their lack of direct interaction with the monster part of your deck. If you give it a second to think about, you'll probably come up with a few examples yourself. Cards like Virtual World Gate Quinglong, Conquistador of the Golden Land, or Big Welcome Labyrinth have grave effects that are extremely important for their respective archetype's success, and being able to deny those while at the same time removing the card entirely is an extremely valuable effect to have access to. Add in the fact that this is a quick play spell, and you've got the perfect recipe for success. We talked before about how Twin Twisters fell out of favor because decks didn't care as much as before about their back row going to the grave, 
and Cosmic Cyclone has taken up its spot as the most played quick play back row removal spell. And also recently, Fire King, the next meta deck, has a pretty big weakness to this removal spell specifically. Since Fire King Island destroys all of its own monsters when it goes to the grave or is banished, it makes for an explosive way to out their board. However, the deck can easily protect it with their continuous spell, Sanctuary of the Fire Kings. Mind you, it cannot protect it from destruction though, and Cosmic Cyclone does not destroy, but banishes. Not hard to put one and one together. So yeah, they're probably going to see this powerful spell going around quite a lot in the future. And storming into our number 3 spot, we find the newest addition to this list, the normal spell Lightning Storm. This spell can either destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls, or all their attack position monsters. Extremely strong, clearly, but limited by a steep restriction, making it so you can only activate Lightning Storm if you don't control any face-up cards. This card's name is a reference to two spells which combine to make a pastiche of the two, Raigeki, which literally means lightning, and Heavy Storm. While not as strong as either of them, just having access to both monster and spell trap removal in the same card is unbelievably powerful. Just saying, there's a reason Raigeki's at three copies per deck and sees almost no play, while Lightning Storm finds itself in a myriad of main and side decks. Monsters are just a lot easier to deal with, partly because monster removal is a lot more common in card effects, but also because you can't just declare battle phase and attack your opponent's Gozen match. This is also the first card in this list, which deals not with a specific number of cards, but destroys all of them without targeting a specific card. Blowout cards like these are few and far between, and they almost always find themselves into most if not all decks. So, you might be asking, if Lightning Storm is so good, why isn't it number one on this list? Well, there's the issue of it only being able to be activated if you don't control any face-up cards. This might not seem like such a big deal, but it absolutely is. While a small restriction, it effectively turns off the card after turn two. All the cards we've seen on this list so far were effective during any moment of a duel, since they had no real restriction to when or how you could play them, which is not the case with Lightning Storm. It's essentially a situation of now or never, where the card becomes almost useless if you don't see it before you start actually playing your deck. This turns down the card's utility by a huge amount, making it only a time-reliant blowout spell, instead of one that you can access at different times of the duel. You might also be asking yourself, why haven't we seen half of this card's original inspiration yet, Heavy Storm? Put simply, because it's banned. While obviously extremely powerful, the card has not been legal for 11 years, so it's hard to really compare it with the other cards that have been played for much longer. Mind you, it was recently unbanned in the OCG, where it's been seen moderate use, so we might see the same change for us in the TCG. And at number 2, we find the only trap on this list, Evenly Match. This normal trap can only be activated at the end of the battle phase, and forces your opponent to banish cards face down until they control the same number of cards as you. Also, if you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. While it doesn't strictly remove only back row, but monsters too, Evenly matches absolutely back-breaking impact on players' back rows more than earns its spot on this list. Cosmic Cyclone sees so much play because it banishes instead of destroying, and well, banishing face down is just a lot better than banishing face up. But that's not all. The fact this removes everything without caring about protection or card positions makes it one of the best board breakers in the game's entire history. Where Lightning Storm had effect diversity at the cost of ease of activation, Evenly has effect impact at the cost of ease activation. Yes, Lightning Storm is a lot easier to activate, not requiring you to lose your battle or main phase, but its effect is a fair bit less powerful, making it so this trap card sneaks ahead of its competition. I don't think I can overstate just how devastating a well-played Evenly match can be. While cards like Lightning Storm can turn a game around, Evenly might just win you the game right then and there, especially when coupled with another form of removal. Because let me tell you, there's nothing better than making your opponent banish all their cards except one back row, and then hitting them with a Cosmic Cyclone to leave them with nothing. Ever since the cards released back in 2017, the cards seen widespread play in side decks during all formats, and for good reason. It played correctly, and coupled with other going second cards, it has the ability to destroy essentially any board you might encounter, especially those focused on spell and trap cards. Decks like Sky Striker, Altergeist, Eldritch, Labyrinth, and a long list of other back row centric strategies. However, recently, the advent of SP Little Knight has made this card slightly worse, since it can blink herself and another monster in order to dodge evenly, returning in the end phase like nothing happened. 
However, an even newer card makes Evenly Match possibly the strongest trap card ever to resolve, Translocation Rollback. This trap card can be banished from your grave to copy a normal trap's effect in your grave at the cost of half your life points. What's interesting about this card is it allows you to activate Evenly Matched with zero cards on the field, making your opponent not able to keep the one card they normally could hold onto if activated normally. At the end of the day, Evenly Matched is one of the game's strongest trap cards of all time, and an amazing way of permanently dealing with your opponent's pesky back row, but doesn't get the number one spot by virtue of not being specifically back row removal, but also monster removal. And to no one's surprise, at our number one spot for the best back removal in Yu-Gi-Oh, we have Harpy's Feather Duster. You already know what this is, but just in case, I'll remind you that it's a normal spell which destroys all spells and trap cards your opponent controls. And that's it. You cannot go any simpler than that. While early Yu-Gi-Oh was trying to find its footing and experiment with the card power levels, we got a lot of overtuned cards which would be banned not too long after release, and Harpy's Feather Duster is one of those cards. Releasing the TCG all the way back in 2003 and in 1999 for the OCG, the card was an immediate hit which needed to be addressed on the ban list. It was semi in the OCG very shortly after release and then limited immediately after. For the TCG, it was banned, even closer to the card's printing, making it very hard to obtain for a long time since the only printings in the TCG were as video game promotions. Time eventually caught up to the spell though, and it was limited in 2015 in the OCG and in 2020 in the TCG. Immediately, Duster found a place in every deck under the sun, and for good reason. Being able to wipe the back row for zero cost and zero downside is just absolutely nuts. Nonetheless, Yu-Gi-Oh evolved to having a lot of powerful explosive cards that swing the direction of a game. So you'd be hard pressed to say that Harpy's Feather Duster cannot exist in a world where cards like Nibiru the Primal Bean and Forbidden Droplet are legal. Fact is, Yu-Gi-Oh is just bombs, the TCG, and Harpy's Feather Duster is pretty much the definition of a bomb. Every good thing I've said about Lightning Storm applies to this, but without any of the downsides. There's a world of difference between the two. You can play this at any point during the duel, and it will have a very large impact. Worst case scenario, it trades one for one in card advantage, making it good at worst. Also, the fact the card's a normal spell means it can be searched with triple tactics thrust, making the issue of Duster's limitation to one copy a much smaller issue. It's just a complete blowout with a lot of different applications, making it definitely the best back removal card in the game.